Okay. Oh no, 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 oh, 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 oh no, oh, oh fuck it. Today AMD officially unveiled the Radeon 9070 series and it gives us a good idea of what the competition will be like for this generation of graphics cards. Here are some things which stood out to me. Pricing. We knew roughly where these cards were going to land for performance, but pricing was the other bit we needed to know before we could make a judgement about how good they actually were. Now we know! $550 for the cheaper Radeon 9070 and $600 for the 9070 XT. What does this mean? Well, it means it could have been worse. They were hinting that 85% of buyers spend less than $700 on their graphics card, so I'm going to make an educated guess and say the original plan was to have the 9070 XT cost $699, and they pulled this plan back in January when they got cold feet and decided it wasn't competitive. At the other extreme, imagine this. Radeon 9070 for $299 and the 9070 XT for $399. Something something about the Red Rebellion and making PC gaming affordable again, significantly striking Nvidia when they were down and gaining considerable market share and good rep within the gaming and reviewing community. Now before you say it's naive to think that they could sell a 9070 XT for as little as $400, remember the 7700 XT sold for $450 and was criticised for being too expensive for what it was. So you can really see how much our perception of what a 70 tier of card should cost has crept up at some point. Now that we're excited that it's only going to cost $550 for the baseline 70 tier model. But provided it can run games at 1440p and 4K resolution, what more do you need? And equally, I can't be mad at AMD for the pricing they eventually went with, because it's still cheaper than Nvidia's, and because it does make a lot of sense against Nvidia's current product stack. AMD is clearly taking aim at Nvidia's upcoming GeForce 5070. It's offering a card with 33% more VRAM for the same price, and with just $50 between that and the XT model, it's clearly pushing an upsell to the 9070 XT. And it's a sensible upsell too. AMD has a habit of upselling buyers so much, they just go for the next Nvidia card up instead. But with the 9070 XT priced close enough to the 5070, whilst still being far enough away from the 5070 Ti, it could actually be appealing to prospective buyers of both Nvidia cards. Here's hoping this sensible, if not super exciting move, will help AMD's market share. Now the set. You really don't like me tonight, do you? No, you don't. Go on then. Go on then. Go on. What do you want? Adorable. Number two, performance. I really like the performance charts that AMD showed. Lots of games were tested, and figures showing wins and losses which makes me inclined to believe them. They've allowed both their new cards to look good by blatantly shitting all over their previous gen 7900G RE card. They're really making it clear that owners of the 7900XT and XTX shouldn't be looking to these cards to upgrade too. And I actually hate this slide because it implies that these new cards should land somewhere between the GRE and XT of the last generation, when I think in many ways they should be better than anything from the previous generation, judging from the performance figures we've been given. But let's be honest, what we really care about is how these new cards stack up against Nvidia's RTX 5070 and 5070 Ti. What are you doing Fluffy? You can go. You don't need to sit there. Now, obviously the 5070 isn't out yet, so I don't blame AMD for not comparing their 9070 to that card, but they do have their $600 9070 XT putting on a pretty good showing against the $750 RTX 5070 Ti. It looks to be almost exactly equal for raster performance and about 10% behind for ray tracing, with the more demanding the game, the more it falls behind. But that's okay, it's not even competing against MSRP really, is it? They've made such a thing about how they've improved ray tracing performance for this generation in so many different ways, yet their benchmarks show that they're still about 10% behind Nvidia, relative to raster performance. Now I don't mind this too much, it looks like they've made significant progress towards closing that gap up, but it does show how big the gap must have been for their Radeon 7000 series. So the 5070 Ti is the better card, but with an MSRP $150 higher and likely even more in practice, I feel that the 9070 XT is affordable enough and fast enough not to be too concerned about Nvidia's card. 
So we just have to see how the 9070 does against the 5070, because it's quite exciting to see two competing products with the exact same MSRP for once. AMD seems quite confident, and the more I think about it, the more it makes sense not to price these cards any lower than AMD did. It could erode at mindshare, and what's the point when it's already going to sell out and have its price price scalped by third parties anyway? Number 3. Toy Shop This is a bit of a silly point, but it's so nice to see AMD showing a beautiful new graphics showcase demo, especially one that refers back to their old Toy Shop one, which I have always deemed one of their strongest graphics showcases. Now it's back once again to showcase path tracing. This is AMD showing that they can do everything Nvidia can. Granted, the desk's reflections do look quite shimmery. And yes, there is some ghosting behind some of the movement. Yes, I thought the robot was entering a concentration camp as well. Look, it is lovely to see AMD doing full path tracing, using their own denoising technologies, and bothering to make their own little demo like this. Even if only the doorway to the toy shop was recognisable as being the same from the old tech demo. So well done AMD, more of this please, and less of this. Point number four, improvements. I hate to belittle AMD's immense efforts just to say that all they're doing is to catch up with Nvidia, but that's pretty much what they're doing here. Their video encoding is getting all the cool new features that Nvidia users have had for several generations already. AMD's new FSR 4 technology standard finally brings decent upscaling to the table, and hipper automatically enables all AMD's new features in over a thousand games. So being the second to offer these features doesn't make people want to buy AMD, but having these features does do away with the reasons for why you might not want to buy AMD. So all very important changes here, even if they're not that exciting to cover since Nvidia already did them a few generations back. Point number five, dubbing. I thought AMD's presentation was all well and good, but it was definitely made before the pricing and specs were finalized. I'm no stranger to editing my videos and having to shoehorn in new narrated snippets here and there, like I'm doing right now, and no matter how hard I try, you can always tell I've done it, because despite my best efforts, my voice segments always sound either bassier or gooier or sexier than the clips before and after. People incorrectly assume this is proof that I'm AI generating my voice, when ironically, if I AI generated it, it wouldn't have these inconsistencies. So I think it can say a lot about a video to see where last minute adjustments have been made to it. Check out this bit of the presentation here, you can even see it in the WAV file that the clip looks different to the ones either side. I'm thrilled to announce the Radeon RX 9070. Here's the bit where they announced the 9070's pricing, and this is very clearly another dubbed bit. 220 watt power envelope, starting at $549 generationally at and the same for the 9070 XT's pricing. And best of all, a starting price point of $599. Looking at the same So these were definitely last minute changes, to the surprise of no one, especially not to more professional non-cat based tech YouTubers like Hardware Unboxed, who were asked by AMD themselves what they thought these cards should be priced at. Yet even they, in that extremely privileged position, still had to make a bunch of different videos preparing for different pricing eventualities. This kind of last minute adjustment by AMD doesn't make them look good, confident, prepared, nor professional, but at least they debate. Oh, and it looks like all the mentions of it competing with the 5070 Ti's performance had been added in last minute as well, which might explain why Gamers Nexus's article on this card, which I suspect was based on a slightly earlier version of this presentation, mentions that they don't compare it with the 5070 Ti at all. Maybe AMD struggled to get hold of a GeForce card until near to the presentation. This bit here is also definitely a last minute addition to the presentation. And if you're looking for the absolute best performance, our partners will feature a higher power 340 watt model. AMD must have really wanted their 9070 XT to look as close to the 5070 Ti's performance as possible, thanks to overclocking. And while the price of the overclocked model isn't revealed, we do know it consumes 340 watts of power to achieve this result. So in short, any mention of the 5070 Ti's performance or the 9070's price seems to have been adjusted last minute via audio re-records. It would also explain why their pricing is absent from many of the slides where you would expect it to be shown quite prominently. Point number six, shade. During the presentation, AMD threw shade at Nvidia several times, but they did it respectfully, as you would expect from a billion dollar company. Simply by being sure to mention stuff that the community will appreciate AMD doing differently to Nvidia, they gained some brownie points in my imagination, my, my, my eyes, everywhere on me, really. Like how they mentioned these cards having the older, more reliable power connectors. At the end, they mentioned wide availability, which 
could be a shot at Nvidia's cards being out of stock everywhere. They even showed a series of benchmarks without upscaling or frame gen trickery, which I guess could also be contrasted to the way that Nvidia relied heavily on extra generated frames to make claims like the RTX 5070 being the same speed as the 4090, when clearly it isn't in practice. Compared with that, AMD showing wins and losses and trying to actually just show us how good their product is was actually very refreshing, without any need for angsty teenager marketing or debating that we've seen in the past. So this is great to see, and more refreshing than any amount of fine wine. So well done AMD, lovely to see you taking steps to improve your announcements, here's hoping the release of your cards goes well. Next time, to be even better, have a full product stack, and don't be afraid to go first and to set the pace instead of cowering behind Nvidia for announcements and features. Then we'll all love you even more.